Hello everybody, I'm your host Hal Curtis and I'd like to welcome you to The Space Industry by SatSearch, where we share stories about the companies taking us into orbit. In this podcast, we delve into the opinions and expertise of the people behind the commercial space organisations of today who could become the household names of tomorrow. Before we get started with the episode, remember you can find out more information about the suppliers, products and innovations that are mentioned in this discussion on the global marketplace for space at satsearch.com. Hello and welcome to today's episode. I'm joined today by Michaela Pergola, Product Manager at DMAC Red. DMAC Red is a global professional sales organization with a focus on providing high reliability electronic components for the space sector. And in today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about how to enhance the procurement of such components across the whole supply chain, really. So Michaela, great to have you here. Is there anything you'd like to add to that introduction? Thanks for having me, I will. And um, no, it's everything fine here this was perfect. Let's get into the topic today. Now, space mission designers are constantly trying to, you know, get the highest cost of performance uh, ratio that they can for components. Engineers need to kind of keep the risks low. And we all know how difficult that is in, with space applications. They will need to ensure high quality and they are looking to also purchase at lower costs, particularly for new space missions where volume is key and you have, you know, smaller teams potentially and smaller companies involved. What do you think are some of the important considerations for engineers who are looking to balance these aspects, this risk, quality, and cost, when they're selecting the sort of components that DMAC Red provides? Well, this question will open up a lot of consideration and insight to be done. And a self-contained answer is not easy to do, but I'd say that uh, can be resumed in a single word, that is requirements. Every decision uh, selecting a components must be taken into account the requirements. This is the baseline to start every discussion with engineering and evaluate the best balance for risk, quality, and cost. Of course, uh, the requirements uh, depends on many variables, like the mission profile that includes orbit, well, the mission will be performed, the lifetime, and many others. As you know, engineering like life is always a trade-off. But since we are speaking about uh, new space mission, so usually it uh, involves low orbit and short lifetime. The use of COTS or downgraded uh, radar uh, components is allowed. So I think that for critical subsystem, the use of radar, the rat tolerant components is almost mandatory. Or anyway, a redundancy configuration with a control design that limits catastrophic errors. Some engineers are not used to space design Think that they can just exchange cuts uh, with radar parts without consequence. But uh, many aspects should be taken in consideration. As you know, space environment is quite different from Earth environment. And many things can go wrong without possibility to fix the, the, your system uh, in orbit. What I'd like to advise to the engineers is to not consider just the downgrade components available to the market, is to consider a full list of downgraded components that are available to the market right now. These devices are electronic components designed for space, but they don't go through all the space qualification flow. That makes them really cheaper because usually they are expensive because all the qualification flow that they have to perform. The, so the mix of uh, plastic package instead of ceramic uh, and reduced screening flow makes the radiation uh, hard uh, downgraded components uh, up to 80% cheaper than uh, usual space grade parts. But from my point of view, are more reliable than uh, cost-wise uh, better than unscreened cuts without the risk of handling all the screen. You mentioned there the qualification flow and there are as we know, there are various different ways in which engineers qualify components depending on the mission, the volume, the exact risk levels, as you put it, the requirements, which is so important. What approaches to sort of qualifying or screening components do you think make sense or, or are applicable in different kinds of scenarios, you know, based on your experience? In these years involved in space industry, I saw many different scenarios and sometimes scenarios that vary during the design phase. So it's quite common that a designer start from an idea on some specs and then they end up to face the reality of the market availability, lead time, pricing, or quality level mismatch with selected components. So in general, I'd say that uh, there are two baseline situations. Uh, from one side, uh, the institutional program financed and driven by space agencies, like for example, uh, 
ESA in uh, European Union and NASA in US. And the fast growing, on the other side, the fast growing market of new space driven by private funding, where the cost saving is a crucial point more than uh, for institutional program. For institutional program, usually they are more demanding and look into uh, more the harsh environment part of the space. For this reason, uh, often the engineer must use qualified components or components that go, go through a qualification-like process. This makes them, of course, the project more expensive and give to the designer a limited choice of components. These components and related design are for sure more reliable and most of the time exceed the design life. And a study that I saw recently made in 2019 in US called the Satellite Lifetime Study showed that 80% of military and civil US satellites and 75% of commercial satellites exceed their design life. Uh, with that, I want to say that uh, maybe the institutional space uh, was usually really conservative on requirements. If this is bad or wrong, I leave to you the consideration. But for sure, uh, something like the ESCC qualified components or uh, in uh, European Union or MIL standard in US is something needed to have guaranteed that the electronic system will be reliable in deep space and for a long time. From the other side, there are new space projects that usually are less demanding in terms of requirements because of the short lifetime, low orbit position. These open up new possibilities where different approach from the classic qualified components and testing is possible. And I'd say it makes sense in order to not, uh, I'd say, shoot a bird with a bazooka because uh, sometimes I think that standardized and uh, of the standardization of the screening and testing for cuts and downgraded components is needed in order to give some insurance to the engineer that should choose the parts. Nowadays, the trend is to use uh, automotive-like screening flow and look uh, into heritage of the COTS components. But uh, uh, space agencies are starting to work to give official guidelines in order to guarantee a minimum official level for these components used in space, new space missions. And I think that uh, this could be the way to go. And you've touched a couple of times on the differences or the relationship between downgraded Red Heart components and... Um upgraded COTS components. Could you maybe give us a couple of examples of where one category is more beneficial than the other or, or more attractive than the other? Like you said, the, the chain behind electronic components, every electronic component is various and wide. For this reason, for space components, is usually asked traceability to guarantee reliability. This is not happening with commercial components. We do not need to forget that also new space missions are subject to space environment that is not like Earth, we said. So uh, many other aspects should be considered, and for sure the effect of radiation on the components is crucial. The radiation resistance of the components depends mainly on the technology of the device and partially on the production batch. It is an intrinsic of the device technology. Just um, a quick resume for those who are not familiar with this. There are two main radiation tests for electronic components, totally ionizing those tests that depending on technology and component that be conformant at high, low, and intense, uh, enhanced uh, low dose rate. This radiation test is based on uh, accumulated energy that the device can tolerate in the junction uh, without significant degradation of its electronic physical performance. The other test for radiation that should be performed is single event effects test. These tests are also destructive and the behavior of the components depends only on the technology. Uh, these tests are not sensitive to the different manufacturing loads. Now we have, anyway, in the, for new space mission, we have an history of about 20 years in, in that new space, collocating the new space at the beginning of uh, 2000. So we have some data on the behavior of COTS in space. But here comes another problem related to the COTS. The product cycles are short, while space project life cycle is quite long and need to rely on components that should be manufactured for many years. So also space heritage do not last for long because the production changes on commercial components. So in short, I'd say, yes, I think that it's worth to upscreen commercial components 
if you do not want to use downgraded uh, radar components. Now, as more and more of the new space missions are trying at least to go beyond low Earth orbit, and you know we've seen various examples of that, uh, radiation considerations for devices uh, are becoming more prominent because of obviously the change in nature of the uh, operational environment they face. Will upscreening COT systems you know, to higher doses be a viable option for s- probably smaller lifetime missions, like a maybe a two-week lunar surface mission, for example? Or do you think such approach comes with too much risk? Uh, yeah, in, in general, these COTS versus uh, downgraded uh, radar parts is something that a uh, topic that I face uh, many times speaking with uh, buyers and engineering from different companies because it's becoming more and more a crucial point uh, now that space electronic manufacturers are trying to enter into the space industry and uh, with more and more products. So um, I define uh, uh, from a quality point of view the upscreening of a COTS an approach down to top, while the downscreening of the radar parts an approach top to down. And many electronic space manufacturers I work with they have embraced this approach. So packaging the class one space grade components into a plastic package and uh, using an automotive like flow. This, uh, like I told you before, reduce a lot of the cost and make it more appealing from the cost point of view uh, if compared to the upstream codes. A typical example that I can do is the RFT plastic products from Renaissance. Uh, that um, in this case, we are speaking about power management device like uh, back regulator, PWM controller, gun fed driver, so pumps, voltage reference, everything related and parts that are used in critical power supply subsystem of uh, the project. And these are parts that are designed for space and placed in a plastic package and with a reduced test flow. In this case, they also created an intermediate version, like in plastic, but with a QMLV qualification, so that uh, save the cost uh, and some tests related to the ceramic package, but uh, with more high reliable uh, quality. Another example that I can give you is that, for example, Borago microcontrollers, again, they signed to be radar at uh, technology level, and uh, or they offer from a QMLK uh, qualified uh, ceramic part down to uh, RT plastic uh, MCU. Uh, the main point I'd like to highlight is that these devices are designed for space. This means that the dye inside the package is reliable from radiation point of view, differently from the COTS components. If uh, you are asking to me, would you choose an upgrade COTS or a downgraded device, I say with the second one. Uh, the reason is quite simple. An upgraded COTS, COTS do not come for free. As a cost that you have to place up front and you have to take care of many aspects and risk to upgrade. And you have to buy in quantities. While the downgraded radar components are designed for space, the die is basically the same of the radar full grade space part. And at the end, the flow, the price nowadays is comparable without the risk of performing the upgrade. Finally then, I wondered if you could um, just give us a little bit of a prediction uh, for this aspect of the industry for the next few years, and particularly how you see risk, quality, and price evolving, these trade-offs and these balances evolving, and the, the judgments and decisions that engineers have to make when it comes to COTS components in for new space missions. Yeah, I think that uh, the approach that was taken until now for bringing COTS to space was not as reliable as to go that deep in space. But both NASA and ESA started programs to create a flow to standardize the cut screening in order to be used in official programs. This, of course, will increase, I think, a bit the cost, but we will put the use of cuts under a more regulated and reliable part. This is happening for COTS and for uh, radar plastic components that I want to remind that space agency didn't want on institutional programs most of the time. They are creating specification like the ESC 9000P from ESA or the Class P introduced by NASA. This uh, will uh, for sure help in spreading the use of COTS components in space, but with more reliability. 
and this will uh, allow the use of these components in missions that go behind the lower Earth orbit. So yes, I think that uh, with the uh, right standardization and good design for space, the cost will be also used for uh, this kind of mission. But uh, I'd, uh, like I said, I rely more on downgraded radar parts. Brilliant. So the choice will be there. And again, it's back to where you began, really, back to the requirements for the mission. So I think that um, the standardization of the costs for space will, in- will increase a bit their price. Uh, we will see a meeting point between the upgraded qualified codes and a downgraded radar part. So they will meet in the middle, let's say. This is clearly a good thing for the designer because they increase their choice. That became much wider. And, um, f- and also the average cost of mission, I think that then and then will be lower. But at the same time, the reliability could be still good enough. I think that this is uh, what is going to happen in the short review terms. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I think that's a really good place to wrap up. Um, it's been really interesting to get your insights on the use of you know, COTS versus Red Hard components and all the different qualification testing and engineering considerations that go with such choices. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for sharing these insights with us today. Thank you for having me and thank you to the SatSearch team. And uh, to all our listeners out there, please remember you can find out more about DMAC Red and the full portfolio of components and products that they supply at satsearch.com. You can also use our free request service to request technical details, documents, company introductions, quotes, information on lead time and, or export controls or anything else that you might need for trade studies or procurement purposes. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Space Industry by SatSearch. I hope you enjoyed today's story about one of the companies taking us into orbit. We'll be back soon with more in-depth, behind-the-scenes insights from private space businesses. In the meantime, you can go to setsearch.com for more information on the space industry today, or find us on social media if you have any questions or comments. To stay up to date, please subscribe to our weekly newsletter, and you can also get each podcast on demand on iTunes, Spotify, the Google Play Store, or whichever podcast service you typically use.